Okay then my friends, so the first piece to the puzzle when you're starting out in object oriented programming is to understand what classes are. Now classes are like blueprints for objects in programming. So much like we'd have a blueprint for real life objects in our lives, for example like a train or something, which describes how to build a train and how that train should behave, we also have blueprints or classes in programming which describe how objects in programming should look and behave. So by that I mean what properties it should have and also what methods it should have. A method is just another name for a function. A method is a function associated with a class, okay? So when I say methods, it's kind of interchangeable with the word function as well. So a class describes what properties an object should have and also what methods an object should have. So just back to our train analogy. The properties could be something like the length of the train or the color of the train or maybe the top speed of the train. They would be the properties of the train, the things that describe it. And the methods or the functions of that train would be to accelerate so it can move or to break. They're the things it can do, right? So imagine we had this blueprint in real life to create trains. Now every train would have these properties and every train would have these methods. Now, the values of the properties might differ for every train that we make. For example, the color or the length of each one might be different every time we make one using this blueprint for a train, but they would all still have these properties and they would all still have this basic functionality, accelerating and braking. So in programming, we're not gonna have a class which describes a train. Well, we might do, but we might have something like a user instead. And the properties of that user could be a username and an email. So all users would have those two properties. And the methods could be something like add friend to add a new friend or post status. Like on Facebook, you post a status. So they could be the methods and these are the properties. And together, these describe the user, how they should look and behave. Now, again, every user that we created using this kind of blueprint or class, they could have different values for the username and the email, but they would all have those properties. So say, for example, we'd have three users. These would be the values for those two properties, but they would all have those properties. They all have a username and they all have an email and they would all have access to the same methods as well. So all of these objects that we create could all do the same things add a new friend and post a status. So in programming in the future, if we ever wanted to create say a new user object, what we do is create a user class, define the properties that that user should have or that user object should have rather, and define the methods that that user object should have. And then we'd say to PHP, okay, make me a new user object based on this user class. And that would create that new user object for us with these properties and with these methods. So now we know the basics, let's have a look at how we create a class in PHP and then ask it to create an object based on that class as well. All right then, so back inside index.php, let's have a bash at creating our own user class. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of all that bump. We don't need that trash anymore. And then we're going to create a class. And the first thing we do in PHP to create a class is use the class keyword. Then we give this class a name. Now I'm going to call this user. Now notice two things here. First of all, I've capitalized this and that is convention in PHP. Whenever you name a class, give it a capital letter. And also this is not plural, it's singular. And even though this will be used to create multiple different user objects, we don't call it users. We just make it singular and call it user. Okay. So now we have curly braces and inside the curly braces, this is where all of the juicy stuff describing our user objects is going to go. And by that, I mean, this is where all of our properties and methods are defined. Okay. Now we're not going to do that just yet. Instead, what we're going to do is create a new user object based on this rather boring class at the minute, but let's create one. So we create a new object based on a class by saying new and then whatever the class is called. So in this case, user, and then we invoke that much like we would a function. 
so parentheses at the end. And this goes out, it looks at the user class and it makes a new object based on this user class. Now, at the minute, that object is gonna be completely blank and empty with no properties and no methods because we've not defined any right here. So at the minute, it's not really a user, it's just an object, but it's made that object based on this user class, all right? Now, if we wanted to, what we could do now is store that user inside a variable in case we wanted to use it later on in the code. So I could say something like user one is equal to a new user. So it creates a new object based on this class right here and it stores it inside this variable. Now, just one thing before we move on, this action of creating a new user based on this user class, this is known as instantiating a class because we're creating a new instance of this user class right here and we're storing it inside this variable because an instance of something is at the end of the day just a single occurrence of something so our user one variable right here that is a single occurrence or an instance of the user class so that's just a bit of terminology this is known as creating a new instance of this class or instantiating that class all right now, if we ever wanted to create a new object based on this class in the future, we could do that. We could just say something like user2 is equal to a new user right now, and that would create a new object based on this class. So how do we actually know that these are based on these classes? Well, we can use a function in PHP, and that function is called get underscore class. And if we pass in an instance, a variable, which stores an instance of that object inside this function, so I could say user one right here, it's gonna tell me what class this object is based on. Now I'm gonna echo this out so we can see that it works. So I'll say echo, and then we'll do a string before it and concatenate it with a dot. And this string just says the class is, and then space, and then it's gonna concatenate whatever the result of this function is, which should be user because it's gonna look at this instance and say, hey, yeah, this is created using the user class. So if I save this now and refresh over here, then we can see the class is user. And if I change this to user two, then it should be exactly the same. So let me refresh again, and we can see the class is still user. So there we have it. We have now two pretty boring user objects. They're definitely user objects, but that doesn't really mean anything at the minute because they have no properties defined up here on methods. They don't do anything. So in the next video, we'll look at adding different properties to this class so that at least it can do something when we create that object.